this week on Dude Stuff. What is going on guys? So today I have got Rob from Dread FX's bike with me. Now this is a Andy Kirby 5000S e-bike and well it's meant to be a 5000 SE bike, but it actually isn't an e-bike. I know you might be looking at this thinking it looks sick. It looks like a stealth bomber with custom paint work. It's got a great big 5000 watt motor. Now the problem with this bike, and I've seen a few bikes like this, this hasn't got a battery, hasn't got a controller, hasn't got a display. It's literally been built up out of parts, and sometimes you come across this, people buy the kits, and for whatever reason, you haven't got a battery. So I've taken the bike off Rob and I said I'll turn it into an e-bike for him, you know, a little bit of payback for all the help he's done for us on the channel. Now, this is quite a common occurrence where people have got a, I would call this motorbike, not really an e-bike, an electric motorbike, when you're looking at like stealth bombers. And potentially this might even be applicable to motorcycles, you know, if you want to remove the engine or it's got a blown engine, you want to turn it into an e-bike. We're going to be looking today whether it's potentially viable to turn a motorbike or e-bike motorbike chassis into an electric vehicle for under a thousand pounds. So the way this come about is, like I said, I've taken this bike off Rob and I thought I could just simply turn this electric by just underpowering this 5000 watt motor. It's not pretty, but I've got this, I've got this old battery that I've used on some old projects. And I was going to whack this 52 volt 20, 20 or 17 and a half amp hour battery on. The thing is, Rob's a good guy. He, he knows that he doesn't need. There's a lot of people that are wrapped up in thinking that they need to go 40, 50 mile an hour, 60 mile an hour. And it's just, it's just not the case in reality. For those that actually cycle and even have e-bikes, like it can be fun just having 20, 25, 30, you know, 40 miles an hour. It's, it's not really a dick measuring contest as a lot of guys seem to think you have to have a ridiculously overpowered electric bike to be useful and fun. Rob only wants this to sort of go 30, you know, he's happy it does at least 30 miles an hour. So what's happened is, I originally looked at fitting this 52 volt battery, got told that that wouldn't work. In my head, I thought it would just I thought I'd better send the 2000 watts to the 5000 watt motor and it would just work, but apparently it won't. The system ain't going to be happy with that. All the phase cables on this massive 5000 watt wheel are hugely oversized and just not really suitable for the smaller controller setup. Um, what else did I also look into doing? So then I thought uh, maybe I'll get a 72 volt battery for Rob. First off, they're not cheap. 72 volt batteries, you're talking like a thousand pounds upwards just for a battery. And then the cheapest batteries that are 72 volts are only suitable for 3000 watts. You know, when you're looking at the BMS and the other specs of the battery, it's still not suitable for a 5000 watt motor. So it's not always in everyone's interest for budget um, to try to upgrade these bikes to the 72 volt 5000 watt system. A lot of people are not going to want to spend the money. They're not necessarily, they know they're not going to want the speed of like 50, 60 mile an hour. Some people do, but it's not necessary for saying you just want to fly around town. You're not going to drive up to the shops at 60 mile an hour in your car. You're certainly not going to want to do it on an e-bike. So, Rob being sensible, I've looked at other options. So what I've come up with is, I was like, can we just put a 2000 watt uh, e-bike wheel, just a normal uh, Kirby bike 2000 watt? That can't be done either because the dropouts are on a mountain bike, I don't know what, they're about 140, 145 mil. On these, they're probably at least, probably around 155 or more, maybe more. So basically, these have got a dropout the same size as a motorbike pretty much. So I had to go back to the drawing board. The 72 volt battery is going to be too expensive and an unnecessary amount of power. Um, a normal electric mounting bike wheel or fat wheel is still going to be a bit short on the dropout size. So I've spoken to a Kirby bike and come up with a solution of this. This is a 2000 watt hub laced onto a 19 inch motorbike wheel which should have the correct size dropouts. We're going to find out. So what that means is you're going to have an electric wheel that will fit in any of these type of variant of stealth bomber type bikes 
potentially old motorbikes, vintage motorbikes. Um, it's going to really open up the scope for what type of electric conversions to do. And for those of you that actually like sensible and realise it would be quite fun still to have something that does, you know, 35 mile an hour, I'd imagine, maybe 40. It's an, it's an awesome option. I don't see why this won't do sort of at least 36 to 40 miles an hour converted, which is more than enough for most people to actually, you know. So it is, in hindsight, an Andy Kirby 2000 watt kit laced onto a motorbike rim with a different size dropout. And I think, I don't know if they sell this as an option on the Kirby bike store already. If it's not, we'll be testing this to see whether, you know, let us know in the comments as well whether you'd like to see this kit. Maybe you've got an old motorbike in the shed. Maybe you've got one of these style bikes and you don't want to be spending 1500 pound on a battery and don't, you know, and you know you don't need to do 60 miles an hour. So we are going to try and install this kit, remove this huge 5000 watt motor. Not only that, you're saving so much weight. You're saving weight. Let's have a look at this thing. It's just like having the Titanic on the back of your bike. I mean, with this wheel off, I imagine this isn't a hell of a lot more heavy than a normal mountain bike. The front end is really light. So I think this is a clever idea. I know people are always trying to go bigger and better and do overpowered stuff to be impressive on YouTube, but I think this is a smart idea. So we're gonna go and try and go cheaper, lighter, and yeah, we'll, we'll just get cracking. We'll get building, we'll see whether this works. This is a first <laughs> 2000 watt electric enduro bike that Rob just wants to use on the streets and pop down the shops, do that kind of thing. You know, a little bit of riding around in the summer. No idea if this is going to work, but let's just see what happens. Right, so without further ado, I'm going to start off by trying to get this back wheel in and we'll tackle one thing at a time. But the first thing is seeing whether we can get this motorbike tire onto that wheel and it all fits a drop out. Completely unknown, but let's see what happens. It's been a couple of days since I took the wheel off of this bike and a motorbike tyre is definitely way, way harder to fit than a mountain bike tyre or any type of bicycle tyre for that matter. I literally tried everything to get the tyre off of this. I, I used metal bars. It was not having it. So it was quite surprisingly difficult to find a tyre shop willing to change a motorbike tyre. I, I think I went to about three tire shops in my area before I managed to leave it with a shop that does motocross stuff and uh, they've changed the tire on it and I've dropped it into the bike. It looks like the back wheel's in and done, but it's not. Um, obviously where I've gone from a wider dropout to a smaller motor, or the opposite to what a lot of people do, it's meant because it's narrower, the brake caliper's gonna need to move inwards so that doesn't line up with a disc and on the opposite side, obviously the chain wheel needs to move out for correct chain alignment. So there's you know a few ways to do it. You can, I think you can get single speed cassettes with like a space in to it, but couldn't find nothing on Amazon over Christmas and New Year. So 
that's what time of year it is at the moment so I've just gone with a six or seven speed free wheel and the chain is really tight on this bike anyway so I'm hoping it's going to line up on one of these bottom two sprockets um, but yeah so it, it all fits in nice I've got roughly the spacing we need but now I'm going to buzz it off pop this free wheel on um, I'm probably going to take some measurements and measure roughly the correct spacing I'm, I need to move the caliper um, there's better ways to probably do it but for the sake of convenience I'm just going to probably use longer bolts and washers just to get the uh, adjustment with the caliper I've told Rob about where I'm at on this bike and he said he's happy enough to adjust the brake himself but you know I'd like to get it working at least so I can test ride it with two brakes if possible if it's not going to be that difficult so yeah without any further ado we're going to buzz this back out zip the freewheel on and uh, see if we can get this brake somewhat lined up I may have to go to the hardware store and get myself some longer caliper bolts possibly some extra washers but uh, yeah let's get straight on it so this is a problem you get quite often the gap between the motor cables and the little bolts on the brake disc it clears at the moment no issues there at all but if I go drop in a spacer behind there to bring it out if I go drop in a spacer behind there I can already see the extra thickness is going to rub against the cable so rather than bringing the brake disc out to meet the caliper we're going to move the caliper in to, make, to meet the brake disc then also you've got to bear in mind the back of the uh, brake caliper doesn't hit this motor so it's a bit of a juggling act really just to um, get things lined up with nothing rubbing but let's see what we can do so this is the amount of spacers I think I've got one two three I think I've got four spacers on the uh, got seven spacers on the free wheel side and how many have we got in there one two three one, two, I can't see if they're fin washers. I think I've used fin squash type washers. I'm just going to count them and remember to put them back as it is because I'm quite happy with the alignment. It spins up nicely. A little bit close outside, but it's still got clearance. That's, that's not an issue. We can juggle about one or two spaces, but let's sort this brake situation and the caliper free wheel situation because that's the real issue here. Once we've got the wheel on, we're just onto the motor and controller and we should be all good from there. at all so all I've done is whacked about an extra three washers and a slightly longer bolt on the caliper side and on the free wheel side I've just stuck it on the second chain we win from the bottom and a little bit played but I think that's pretty good I mean little things can be adjusted afterwards Rob was happy to set the brake up himself but I quite like to get it running at least working even if it needs a little bit of adjustment but I'm really happy with that. Just need to check over it and then we should be good to tighten the nuts fully, run this up into the uh, junction box, flip the bike over and start doing the controller and battery. But it all seems spot on, quite excited. Really curious to see how this performs. Because I really do, I really think that you could take this kit and put it on many different motorbikes and just have something for buzzing around town at you know 30 to 40 miles an hour which I think do you know what I mean I've got a 900cc motorbike that's terrifyingly fast and I love having something fun and small to just buzz about on that's not going to kill me riding it in winter and do you know what I mean I love the idea of taking an old motorcycle motorbike and converting it or you know taking something like this is going to need a 1500 pound battery and just fitting the entire kit for a grand um, I did weigh the wheels. What was the weight difference? I need to double check, but I believe it was about six kilograms. If it's vastly different to that, I'll put it up on the screen, but I think there was at least a six kilogram saving, which is quite a lot just from the back end and the wheel. Um, I think this total wheel combo is about 14 kilograms, and I'm pretty certain the 5,000 watt wheel I took over it was well over 20, so yeah. Right, 
let's get this all tightened and tied it up and flip it over and see if we can get this beast running. Oh fuck. Right, back wheels on, taking the side panel off. I've stuck this 52 volt Kirby bike battery with the LG cells. It fits snug as a bug. There's a Dewalt battery in there, which makes it very tight. Um, Rob uses that for like lights and bike alarm and stuff. But we've got it in there. I think it's insecure enough. We can wedge a few, uh, few microfiber cloths in there or whatever for now. But what I'm thinking is, we whack the controller, display and throttle, connect it all up and just do a light test fit to see if it fires up on the back wheel moves. If it does, we're gonna take this thing for a blast and see what it does with 2000 watts in it. Let's go. Power level five. Oh, there's cars ahead. How annoying. Do you know what, guys? It is so cold today. It doesn't look it because of the blue skies, but it's been snowing this morning, snowing yesterday. I've got no gloves on. I can't feel my hands, so we're going to make it a quick test ride. But uh, I can already say this thing is so smooth. I haven't done a top speed run yet, which is going to be difficult on the back roads. I've also got the speedometer set to a 24 inch wheel, which is roughly about the equivalent of a uh, 19 inch motorbike, which is what this has got on it. Oh my God, I can't feel my hands. But I mean, what I can say is it's worked. I mean, it goes, goes absolutely fine. It's smooth. Pedals well. Seems to handle well. Really pulling. I can't see why anyone wouldn't want this kit for like an old motorbike that doesn't weigh a lot. Electrifying basically. Sort of an urban little town commuter. Oh my god, my eyes are streaming. I mean, we're going uphill now and it's pulling, it's pulling 20 mile an hour absolutely fine uphill. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get a full speed test run on this. I think my hands are going to fall off if I go above 25. I mean, still creeping up speed going uphill. I think Rob's going to be really happy with this. It probably goes faster than he wanted it to, to be honest. Feels a bit more a little bit more planted than a normal mountain bike, apart from the front 20 inch fat wheel. Dolls are sharpening a little, dolls are handling a little bit, the 20 inch fat wheel. But we're gonna make this short and sweet guys, because it is cold AF out here today. I need to invest in some riding gloves. If you guys know any decent ones for the winter, let me know. I just don't want them massive thick ones where you can't literally do anything or feel anything. 
Varsay, we do a slingshot off the roundabout and try and get a top speed in if there's no cars in front of us. Okay, it's quite busy, so I don't, I don't know if we're going to get this. All depends on who's pulled off the exit at the roundabout. All right, what we got? No, come on. Got this red bloody pickup truck in front and a red light. I'm going round the roundabout again. I think it's too busy. We ain't going to get a high speed running, but it works well, regardless. All right. Oh, we might be in with a chance. I can see a clear run ahead. 22. 25, 27, 29, 30, 31, 32, 32. I think that's speedos out. I think that's faster than 32. Oh, right, let's get a bike back to the workshop because it is too cold for this today. Right guys, looks like I popped just straight up to Rob's, drop it off because we need the space in the workshop and I'm sure Rob's pretty happy to get his, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's not me is it today, everyone's going to be saying I'm bitching in the comments about it the weather. It is freezing, absolutely Abs freezing. It is bitter cold, it's like zero degrees outside. Um, Rob's just had a very quick go, do you want to show him it uh, up and running? Drive by. Yeah, that picks up really well. Yeah, what I'm thinking is, maybe because it's equivalent of about a 24 inch wheel, I'm thinking that it's got a slightly smaller diameter. I don't know actually, looking at it, it looks bigger. I have no idea, you're gonna have to put a GPS on it to see if the speed's accurate, but it, it picks up well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does pick up well. Because what I've been saying to the guys on the video is this could potentially be a kit that can go on any motorbikes. It's more or less a motorbike size dropout. And, you know, Potentially it's a way of getting a broken old motorbike, which I've got a few, <laughs> with blown engines up and running. But it's enough power to get around town, isn't it? Just oh, a yeah, bit, bit of urban riding. Yeah. Right, guys, it's a long enough video as it is. We're going to call it that there. I will say, though, if anyone wants to see this on the Kirby bike site as a kit to potentially get any motorbike up and running, I think it's genius. It's, you know, you've saved about six, eight kilograms on the back wheel. You probably, probably, I'm going to guess, say, probably four or five kilo on a battery where a 72 volt, 20, 30 amp hours is going to weigh much more than that 52. It's pretty light and it's, it's a good setup. So let us know in the comments. We'll try and get it up on the Kirby bike store. That's what uh, me were collaborating with, you know, Kirby bike bike's all about just finding new products getting stuff out that you guys want yeah well, hopefully rob's gonna get out obviously when the weather's a bit nicer yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely freezing out here today hope you enjoyed it don't forget to go onto rob's channel follow rob dread effects if you're not already subscribed to me hit that button give us a like leave us a comment and we'll see you guys in the video soon take it easy